Supreme Chancellor Obi Wan Kenobi by Stone Freak. Chapter 64 Mace talks to the council. Mace scrubs it and across his face, trying to keep a clear head, even as the council meeting drags on. In the face of the other council members, he can see the same feelings he harbors himself uncertainty, worry, hints of anger, fierce determination. But all of it marked by a strong sense of fatigue. They barely have time to so much as consider an event and its consequences before something new comes flying their way, metaphorically hitting them in the face. The discovery of a clone army, apparently requested by a dead member of the Jedi, the discovery of a droid army, the utter betrayal of one of their own, war, ever-deepening and disheartening war efforts, Obi-Wan is made Chancellor of the Galactic Republic, the first assassination attempt against him, the second assassination attempt, the discovery of an old plot against the Jedi going back at least a decade, an explosion in the Senate, the discovery of the assassin making it clear that the explosion was caused by the Sith Lord, and before Mace could even notify the Council about the other assassin's offer regarding a tool to identify the Sith Lord, said Sith Lord makes Another attempt on Obi-Wan's life through some form of force usage Mace has never seen before. If things could calm down and let him take a breather just for a few weeks, that would be very much appreciated. He sighs deeply. He needs to discuss their next steps with the council. They need to decide whether to take La up on her offer or not. Can they compromise themselves in this way? Say something you want to, Master Windu, hmm? Of course, Master Yoda would notice. Mace draws a deep, steadying breath. It must be done, and they should not waste time. Lord Wolves contacted me through his undercover calm yesterday. He begins, allowing his fellow council members some time. As you'd know, once he returned from his mission on Celeste, he was sent to Coruscant's lower levels to see what he could find out regarding the bombing of the Senate. He watches the others nod their heads, clearly remembering... So he has news already. Ki Adimundi leans forward in his chair as he strokes his chin in contemplation. That was fast, even for that boss, Master Rancisis says, twirling his hair around one clawed finger. And unfortunately, it was no good news. Well, perhaps Maisie's being slightly too harsh there. There were some news that weren't exactly bad, but on the whole... Another dead will be assassin then. Addie crosses her arms over her chest and leans back in her hair before she makes brief eye contact with her cousin. None of our recent investigations have been able to yield any real results, all of them ending with another dead body. So if you say you have bad news... Miss holds back a sigh. I'm afraid so. Night Voss found the body of an assassin who he certain was the one to enact the Senate bombing. Further, he believes, and I agree with him, that despite all the evidence to the contrary, the attempt was directed at Master Kenobi and not Senator B-1. Silence. Night Moss made that deduction based on the psychometric vision as well as the manner in which the assassin was killed. A broken neck from a long distance. He watches as comprehension and dawning horror fills the faces of the other council members. The Sith Lord! Master Yoda says gravely, his voice filled with steel. Yes. Mace closes his eyes. So he is on Coruscant, then, and yet we haven't sensed him at all. Ali says, one hand rubbing her forehead. Everywhere we turn, there is another dead end, and the specter of the Sith Lord hovering over us. And even if we know that Master Kenobi is the true target, Galia interjects, we have no proof that will hold up in front of the galactic courts. Our testimonies as Jedi, especially when it's based on the Force, hold little and ever-lessening weight. She glances at her cousin again before leaning back in her chair again and closing her eyes, breathing deeply and working on dispersing the frustration she's projecting in the Force around her. There is... something. Mace opens his eyes again to find all of the other members of the Council watching him intently. In order to find the dead assassin in the first place... Night Walsh used one of her guildmates as a starting point. This other woman who calls herself La has an offer for us. Tell us. Plo's face is grave. If we can help from an assassin, it will never be admissible in a court of law. If we don't take the help, where will it leave us? Do we have any choice in this matter? This may be our only chance of finding this Sith Lord. They're clearly capable of hiding their voice presence. 
Will we even be able to bring the Sith Lord in front of a court of law at all? If we allow murderer to continue on our way unhindered. We have no proof of her supposed identity as an assassin, and if we don't accept her help, we may never progress in the investigation at all. We will have to wait letting an assassin who we have no proof against go versus risking that the Sith Lord escapes again. I will not claim that an assassin is no danger, but I will say that she pales in comparison to an actual Sith Lord. Who knows what atrocities they have committed and will continue to commit the longer they move unhindered and unseen. We already know several of the Sith Lord's crimes, but none of this loss. How can we risk it? She did not request complete immunity either, only from us and only temporarily. If someone else wishes to take her into custody, we are not to interfere. That means she either doesn't have anything to worry about, or she's certain that her crimes cannot be traced back to her. Even so, we only know that she's a member of an assassin's guild. That is, in and of itself, not exactly a crime. For all we know, she's working there as a secretary. We don't have anything to charge her with and take her to the judicial forces for either. Before we come to our final decision, we should consult some Jedi who are more knowledgeable of the Underworld. We should also likely ask Knight Voss about his opinion on the matter. Agreed. We should gather as much information as we can and use the resources we have. So I was agreed then? I don't see what other choice we have. Knight Voss, after much deliberation and thought, the council has decided that we have no choice but to take La up on her offer.